action we're on going to talk about something completely different this is actually a training video we're going to talk about rcbo's rcds elcbs whatever you want to call it but basically when my name is always called earth leakage circuit breaker basically it'll stop you getting electrocuted and they used to work very simple in the old days it was a wee stone bridge it was two in two out if there was an imbalance on the bridge so your live neutral going in live neutral coming out and it would feed back in if there was an imbalance it created a voltage in the center of the bridge it would move and it would trip that was the old-fashioned elcb earth leakage circuit breakers often now referred to as rcds or rcbo's rcbo is an mcb and the earth leakage circuit breaker all built in one we get quite a lot of calls in the uk and people going oh i've installed the inverter and it's tripping my uh, rcd or whatever it is you want to call it rcbo it's tripping it but to understand the basics of it now actually there's a simple setup here and the guys were looking at these things and i'm actually going to talk about some of the pitfalls that people fall into because generally these will not but understand one thing do you need to use an rcd and i'll refer them to rcds as, as a generic term do you need to use an rcd if the cable is buried into the wall and it's unprotected yes you need to use a 30 milliamp rcd however there are exceptions if the cable goes into trunking it's protected no you don't need to use an rcd if the cable is surface mounted and you've got some sort of protection over it no you don't need to use an rcd so generally in most cases unless it's actually buried in the wall and the only time it will be totally buried in the wall is maybe on a new build we've got the cables powering an inverter in a brand new build then you would need to use a 30 milliamp RCD. But apart from that, the answer is no, you don't need to use an RCD. It's not necessary. Um, I think personally, it's a good idea. And often I would consider using not a 30, but maybe a 100 milliamp RCD. It just gives you some protection, but it's not necessary. Now, often people fall problems with RCDs. And I'm gonna talk about some of the common problems. Now here, we had two inverters wired here. And what they've done is they connected, these are RCBO, and they connected to two of them. They put one inverter on one, one inverter on the other. The, the guys made a couple of mistakes. Now, this is emulating from a site where they actually went onto a site, and we noticed a couple of mistakes. First of all, they common the neutral. So they had the output from the RCB coming out, and they took the neutral off the neutral buzz bar. You can see on here, bring the camera in, look, look. So you see on the... If you, on the consumer unit, you've got the neutral bar here, and they take the live through here, through the RCBO, and take the neutral there. Problem is, you've got an, you create an imbalance, and by doing that, you're not getting back in as what's going out. You must connect both live and the neutral through the same device. You can't you take it from another part. You can't say, oh, it doesn't matter about the neutral, it's just the live. Well, with an RCD device, the neutral is just as important as the live. They must be balanced. And if the power is not balanced, so the live is coming through and its neutral is referenced somewhere else, it will trip every time. Common problem. Common problem number two. Two units here. What they fitted is one RCBO for one, one RCB for the other. Now, if you're using MCB's main circuit breaker, it's fine. You can actually do that. Not brilliantly clever way of doing it, but you can do it. Why am I saying it's not brilliantly clever? Is because these two machines are in parallel. So the output for E, you're not totally isolating. They're both working together. So from safety point of view, you really should use a single protector, one device. You parallel everything. The same with the RCBO. Because if you've got a feed coming in off one RCBO and the output may be coming off the other inverter, so you're going to get an imbalance. So if you've got two RCBOs, two inverters in parallel, it could imbalance. And what somebody said to me, he said, well, if I put one on its own, it works perfect. I put the other one on its own, of course it's going to work perfect. One on it two. But when you put the two together, this one might be feeding in this one's RCBO because they're bi-directional. These inverters go both ways. It's not like you're powering a light fitting where it only goes in one direction. They are bi-directional. They backfeed. They go both ways. It's very, very important to realize that, and especially when you're wiring it. Another common problem is, as I say, people connect these in and they switch it on. They say, oh, but my, my, my RCD is tripping. 
Now, in an inverter, there is a very, very small earth leakage. We know that because we use what they call Y caps for decoupling. Very low power, it's perfectly loud, absolutely standard. But if your house wiring is a little bit on the close, so you may have a, a dicky uh, refrigerator or some moisture in the bathroom, and it could just send it over the edge and it could trip it. Nothing to do with the inverter itself, it's to do with the house wiring. So what I suggest, if you, if you switch it on and the thing trips every time you switch it on, remove the inverter out of the common RCD, RCB, or whatever protection device you've got, and power it separately on its own device, separately from the AC, a separate device. Then try it. If you're wiring on, if you're wiring a surface, you don't need to use any device. And as I said before, if you want to, for your own safety, you can put 100. This is always a subjective. And people say, a lot of electricians say, oh, but the MCS says it's not allowed. Well, I can tell you, I had a conversation straight from the horse's mouth uh, from a very well-known person, I'm not gonna, who, who a lot of people know sits on many of the committees. And he told me, he said, actually, the standard is this. If the cables are buried in the wall, like a new house build, yes, you have to use a 30 milliamp, but it could be separate. If the cables are surface or they're in, in a conduit or in a capping, no, you don't. You don't need anything. You don't need nothing because to avoid nuisance stripping. So remember, if you've got two in parallel, you could be getting close to the limit, maybe three, just because of the Y capacitors and the decoupling, the various things that's going on there, could cause a nuisance tripping on a 30 milliamp. But, but if everything else in the house has got zero leaking, then it won't. But often you've got leakage in the house that's causing it. So you wire the units up and say, oh, wire up, it's tripping my RCD. Well, first of all, unwire it and wire the AC to a different point. And if you're not too sure and you saw, please consult a good qualified electrical engineer and they'll help you find the problem. But it's not the equipment. Every time I've had it many, many occasions and it's never the equipment, it's never our gear. Okay, it comes with the territory and we try and help people. But you know, at the end of the day, it is an issue. Now, the other problem is, is also to do with the earth bond relay. Some people say, oh, when the earth bond relay clips in, and the AC comes back, boom, it goes off. Why would that happen? Well, the only way, way it would actually happen for it to trip, it means that when the earth bond relay came in, it rerouted the neutral. So when you're on grid, it's taking the neutral to earth. Of course it's going to trip. So it's a wiring issue with the earth bond relay. What I suggest to check it for your own sanity, why your earth bond relay in, if, if you're actually using on one of the, one of the mini beasts, wire the earth bond relay in with the feed hear the thing click leave your, your dry contacts away don't touch them don't do anything with the earth neutral bond make sure it clicks so when you're actually off grid it clicks when you're on grid it's open put your meter on it make sure it's open but you, you you just do a simple test you know it's open and when you got off grid it bleeps very simple and you can see the delay the time delay happening once you know that's working and you've wired that correctly, then use the dry contacts. Don't use anything else, the dry contacts on the, on the relay to complete your neutral earth bond. It's really simple. It's really simple. You're just using the contacts of the inverter to drive your coil. You may need a feed to drive the coil. If, it, if, it's, if they're dry contacts, so you put your live as your feed, drives your coil on your contactor, and the dry contacts on the contactor create your earth neutral bond. It's that simple but go step by step. That way you won't have a problem because there's so many people seem to be suffering issues with RCBOs, not just earth bond relays, and then also to maybe wiring a couple in parallel or not fully understanding or other issues in the property that's causing it to trip. Well, it's nothing to do with the equipment. So when you have this issue and suddenly you switch it on and clicking off, Go slowly, slowly steps. First of all, disconnect the, disconnect the inverter from the system and wire it into a different circuit, completely separate circuit. You can take it from the common feed coming in, wire it into a different circuit. Ensure you're obviously fully compliant with the electrical wiring, but wire it into a separate circuit. Do it with MCB if you want, if, you, if you're actually on surface, do it in MCB. If you want for safety, which I probably would as an electrical engineer, use 100 milliamp. Now I know I'm gonna get loads of comments on this video, but this, this is actually, this is correct standard. I'm telling you as it is. Once you've done that, take it through the various stages, the equipment works fine. You don't need to spend hours and hours. If there is a fault on the house wiring, 
and maybe he's maybe a faulty refrigerator or and, and I'm not saying it could be anything then that needs to be found you have to go through and plug everything in the house but that's not for the solar installer electrician to find that's for a general electrician to go and find out what's wrong with the house so please take care slowly slowly straightforward things about it and you won't have a problem RCDs, RCBOs, ELCBs are there as a protection device. They work by imbalance. What goes in must come out. If there's an imbalance in the circuit and you reroute it any way, which A, taking for a common buzz, not using the neutral on it, putting two together in parallel, three together in parallel, they will trip every time. They're a protection device. So it's, please take care in the wiring. I'm not going to teach you how to wire a house. I'm presuming all the people watching this are qualified sparkies, electricians, electrical engineers. So I'm not going to teach that. But I basically want people to understand the issues about it. And they are fairly basic, but people do have these issues and a common problem. And it is very rare, the equipment. One more thing, earth rods. Do you need an earth rod with our inverter? It depends. It really, really depends. If you're in a modern house and all the plast pipes are plastic and everything else, then you should have an earth rod. And there's probably an earth rod fitted next to the meter. It's quite standard. If you're in a standard house and you've got copper pipes, metal pipes, whatever, cross bonding coming in, then you don't need an earth rod. The only time you actually need an earth rod is, is basically if somebody cuts all the wires coming in, the whole wire is cut and you lose your earth connection. But if you've got cross bonding, then you don't need it. But if you haven't got cross bonding, then yes, you should really have an earth rod. And that's the only time you'd actually have an earth rod. Does an earth rod affect the RCBs tripping? Absolutely not. It could trip it, but that's due to a faulty wiring. Our earth rods in themselves will have no effect on RCBO, RCD, LCB tripping. The only thing that causes one of these devices to trip is an imbalance, an imbalance. What goes in that way must connect, go backwards, so it becomes a circuit. It's a circuit. If that circuit, if, if the circuit is not complete and, the, and there's more power going in than coming back into it again, then it's going to cause an imbalance and it will trip. And sometimes it is a pain in the neck to find. But if you go through a straightforward, systematic process, and don't forget, with most fuse boards or consumer units, when you switch them off, your neutral is still connected. They're not dual pole. So many of them are only single pole. So therefore, you switch them off. You can still get a nuisance trip with everything switched off because your neutral is still there. So you can still get a nuisance trip with everything switched off. So that's what, so it doesn't always work that way by switching everything off. But the only way, it, it, it takes a bit of time, a bit of patience. But as I say, I'm not going to teach you how to fault find on a house. But often these problems, you go there as a solar installer and the problems are still there. So thanks for watching. I hope this video has been useful and trying to sort of get some of the mysteries about RCDs, RCBOs, whatever you, whatever is used in your installation. Thanks for following us.